Welcome to our Picmonic webinar series. Picmonic is a powerful multi-sensory study tool to help you remember all the information you need to know in nursing school fast. This pre-recorded live webinar will be a three-part series on ECGs. But before we get into it, make sure you head to picmonic.com to sign up for a free account. That way you can reference the Picmonics that are talked about in the lecture and continue to use Picmonic to memorize all the topics through to the NCLEX. Now, let's join Dr. Kendall Wyatt as he teaches us about ECGs. So we're going to focus on a lot of the basics to make you good at interpreting ECGs and good at um, of all the basic things. And we're going to go over a lot of rhythms, and then you're just going to need to practice. Now, if you've not heard of Picmonic before, what we do at Picmonic is we take all the things you need to know, and we take all of the, the things in medicine, and we turn facts into characters. Wow, my voice cracked. I must be going through puberty again. Uh, even the last time was late, I guess the second time past 30, it should happen. Uh, so uh, something like bipolar should be, uh, will turn into a bipolar bear. And if you need to learn about maybe warfarin, the drug, um, you're going to be able to learn about a war fairy inside of Picmonic. You can try it out for free. If you, Lots of you guys are already subscribers. We appreciate that. Um, you can check it out. There's tons of different topics. There's well over 100, 900 topics for nursing, coming everything you need to know. Uh, pharmacology, diseases, disorders, um, and all the crazy stuff that you just have so much trouble memorizing when you're in nursing school. And of course, every other type of medical uh, medical degree. I understand. Now, um, what we're going to go over today, <clears throat> we're going to go over just a really quick hit on some basic anatomy. Some high yield points on the anatomy side, but we're also, most importantly, is understanding the blood flow. I really think so many people uh, fail at cardiology because they just don't really understand the blood flow and how to make sure that you memorize that first. It's super important and understand the concept of it. And I know all the instructors out there, they say concept, concept, concept. Mm -hmm. But in reality, um, you know, that's really, um, really difficult to kind of grasp. Well, what is the concept? Well, we're going to go over concepts of this stuff today. Um, we're going to go over how to calculate the rate in a very crude rudimentary form. And then we're going to jump into some rhythms. Now, uh, after that, we'll do some review and Q&A. If you have any particular questions, um, you can check out this recorded version. It will be on Picmonic's YouTube. It's live on there right now. Um, you can check that out on YouTube at Picmonic Video. Just type in Picmonic Video or search Picmonic in YouTube. It's going to pop up. Look at our channel. It'll be the newest one. So let's go and get started. This webinar usually, um, usually runs about an hour. Um, it usually takes me a solid hour to go through this. Um, so, um, you know, if you're not planning to hang around for an hour, you can catch up and follow up later. But we do hit literally every high yield point that you need to know, all of the basics. So really, you need to know everything in this one. There's not really much that I say in this webinar that's like, yeah, you can kind of just brush over that. It's not really much here because we've already stripped all that out. Because we've taken really about 12 hours of what you would learn in ACLS and condensed it all down to an hour in a really rapid fire form. So maybe you need to watch it a couple times. Maybe you need to slow it down. And I understand that and I get that, especially if this is your first time um, doing ECGs. Now, um, the one of the things that's important to understand, and this is just one of our Picmonic images, throughout the entire um, webinar today, we've got lots of Picmonic images from our system. And it's not just a bunch of random images. You can go learn them all in there and check it out. But this is the coronary arteries. Now, one thing that's really important as you're learning coronary arteries is really knowing that there's a, uh, the um, left coronary artery and the right coronary artery. And they really branch off the main two, um, the main bifurcation. Now, a bifurcation is where something splits, so it's bi, um, bifurcate, bi means two. So it splits and it bifurcates, it creates into two. So you have the left and right, mar um, left and right um, coronary arteries. Now, one thing that's really important to know is that um, for the understanding that basic concept is important because when you go and need to learn 12 lead EKGs, when you go into actually if you're working, um, you know, you need to do some ACLS and advanced things, um, you can really uh, go in and learn and understand a lot of those basics of where the pathology is happening in the heart. And that's about all I'm going to go over with that right now. Now, one thing that is so important, and I just see so many people just brush over this, they learned it in anatomy class, and um, then they, you know, they they just kind of forgot it, or they don't have it at the tip of their tongue, is learning the blood flow through the heart. It's so important. Now, I'm not going to go through and, and drill basic uh, rote memory tactics into getting you to memorize it, but what you just, you just have to understand that the, the um, you know, we go from capillaries into venules and veins, then into those vena cava, um, into the right atrium. Now, the right atrium and the right side of the heart's all deoxygenated blood through that tricuspid valve, um, or through into the uh, right ventricle, and then, of course, into the pulmonary artery and the lungs. So 
Um, one of the things as we're going through and talking about this is, um, like I said, you really just, you do have to know this. Um, you need to know it. I'm not going to um, harp on staying on it. But um, what is important is making sure that you um, know that the right atrium deoxygenated, right atrium, then to the right ventricle, then to the lungs. So then the lungs, then the, um, then goes, gets oxygenated, goes back out to the left atrium and the left ventricle, and then out. The point of that is the left ventricle is the largest, you know, it's the largest of the heart because it's got to pump out to the entire daggone body, right? Um, and it's huge. So it's got to, it's, it's, it's huge. And it really has to, um, really has to pump a lot. So it's going to be a lot bigger. So then if we have that left coronary artery that um, essentially needs to, um, that if that, if that artery gets blocked, then that's the left, the uh, left coronary artery, then we know that that's, that's a, that's a big problem because we're essentially cutting off all of the blood supply to blood supply to the, um, to the biggest part of the heart that's pumping. And that's what's really, um, really becomes a problem. Now, when you think about this, this is great when you go and you think about heart failure, which we've got videos on all that stuff. Um, and all the other things, heart failure, and all of the other diseases as well. You can think about how some, you know, something as simple as a myocardial infarction can essentially cause, then maybe cause a lot of problems. Um, it can cause, um, <clears throat> and you can think about the pathology that goes along with it. So I like to think about this with my wonderful fish tank method. Whoops, before we um, jump into this. So I just think of the body as a fish tank. These all go together, the pipes or the veins and arteries, the pump itself, the heart, which is what we're talking about for electrical rhythms, the aerator in every great fish tank, you need something to pump oxygen in there. So we've got our lungs. And then the tank and the fluid is just like the fish tank itself with water, which of course is the actual body keeping everything together in the blood. And then everything needs a great filter like the kidneys. And we've got these little filter kidneys here. I got my orange cup here today with me. Um, so it, uh, I, my mouth gets dry, so I always have to take a, a little drink. Now let's jump into EKG stuff. Now that we're finally going. Wow, it's just, um, that's painful. So one of the things I want to talk about are um, the electrical physiology of the heart. Now when we talk about the electrical physiology, we know that we have to talk about the sinoatrial node. We've got this um, sinus, <clears throat> sinus atrial, sinoatrial node here. We've got our little, our little spark plug. And that's what's really important to know that it's at the top of the heart. So electrical activity comes from up here, and it comes down from the right side of the heart all the way down to the left ventricle. It comes from the sinoatrial node to the AV node. We've got our little aviator uh, wearing heart. And then, of course, it goes to the bundle of his, and we've got our hissing snakes, and then um, down to the Purkinje fibers and out to the rest of the heart. Now, when you think about this conduction system, what you really need to know is that each one does different speeds. And this is an important concept, again, to think about. Because what happens is it's really like a backup system. You know, it's like having a buddy system, and if one fails, then the other one's going to um, step in and help out. So what happens is the sinoatrial node, they all have different rates which they kind of kick in at. And that's really the concept to think about. So when you think about somebody who then has a heart block, which we're not going to go into the ECG of heart blocks, but they have a heart block, so they have blocked the electrical system that person is not going to have a fast rate, right? They're going to have a very slow rate. So let's talk through that. So if you talk about the SA node, the sinoatrial node, it has a regular beat, a, a, an intrinsic rate of 60 to 100 beats a minute. That's essentially, essentially a, sin, a sinus rhythm, right? A sinus rhythm is intended and matches a sinoatrial node firing from the sinoatrial node because it's essentially firing from the normal place and firing correctly. And that's really what you can think about. So it fires from that right atrium, the SA node, comes down to the right atrium, down into the, <clears throat> uh, uh, the AV junction, the AV node, it's often called, or the atrioventricular junction. Now, the AV node is the second spot that it, it gets electricity. So it comes from the SA node to the AV node, then it comes all the way down and then essentially um, fires throughout the rest of the heart. Well, if the SA node um, fails, if something happens and you have a heart block, a blocked conduction pathway, essentially what happens is the AV node can take over. It can work all by itself because that's one of the great properties, but sometimes albeit bad properties of the heart is that they're, they're automatic. They can conduct themselves. And if I'm energized and I'm in a cardiac cell, my buddy over here who's a cardiac cell, if I'm electrified and I go and I shock him, he's going to fire right beside me. So it conducts all the way throughout the, the heart tissue as well. And that's one of the great things so that the AV node can essentially fire in the middle of the heart. And that's where you see all those weird problems where you see inverted inversions of like the, um, uh, the QRS complex because it's, it looks weird, but that's because of a probable problem. And there's very identifiable patterns that we see on the, on the ECG oh. that we're able to keep track of. Um, so um, um, the last part is the, are the Purkinje fibers. So down from the AV node here, 
out down, then we have these Purkinje fibers, and they go out through the ventricles. The Purkinje fibers are the backup. They come in at 20 to 40 um, intrinsic rate. Um, and then they're really just kind of the, the true backup system. Uh, somebody, uh, uh, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Uh, Stenitis says um, that they heard Stitch. And that's right. So um, since usually I put Stitch in another room and kind of hide him off to the side, but he's, uh, he's here with me today. Um, so if he does bark, I'm sorry, but he's, he kind of has dependency issues. So um, as I talked about the cardiac cells themselves, they're automatic and they conduct themselves. They're excite, they excite themselves as well as they are contractile. Now, that's a, bunch of, that's a bunch of basic stuff. Let's talk about ECGs themselves. When we talk about the ECG, you got to know the parts. I mean, if you don't know, uh, it's like reading the user manual. You have to know the basics before you can really just dive in. Otherwise, you're destined to fail. So let's talk about this. So we have the P wave. Now, one of the things I talk about are the PQRST. And when I hear people talk about it, they're like, oh, I can't remember that. If you can remember the alphabet, you can remember the PQRST. So just remember that the P starts first. Um, now, I know usually peeing is last, but in this case, we're going to think about uh, the P first. So um, when we talk about the P wave, what happens, the P wave is the first deflection above this isometric line. The isometric line is essentially this imaginary line of wherever the ECG kind of um, resonates to a base. So we have this, so this would be on the isometric line before the P wave. So that first deflection above the isometric line is the P wave. Um, and then we've got the Q, which is usually the QRS complex, which we're going to talk about again in a sec. And then the last is the T wave, or the T, and that's the deflection after the QRS complex. And we need to know um, what each of them do. Now, we've got um, a wonderful picmonic to help you with this. You can go check it out. We've got a little queen and then a little R rocket, um, our little S for shooting down, and then, of course, our T trophy to help you remember P, Q, R, S, T, as well as learning them. Now, one of the things you've really got to know is you just got to understand what's going on with each of the pieces of the ECG. So the P wave essentially is atrial depolarization. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means the atria are depolarizing, right? Well, that means they are discharging, and essentially that's the electrical contraction, the electrical activity that's causing contraction, depolarization. And of course, it creates a little indentation. And then the QRS complex itself, so from the start to where the Q deviates down the isometric line all the way to where the S returns the isometric line, the QRS complex is ventricular depolarization. So that's where the ventricles depolarize. The electrical activity fires and the ventricles depolarize, which essentially should equal contraction. Now, what's interesting about ECGs is that just because there's electrical activity, that does not necessarily mean that the actual muscle is doing that. An ECG is only measuring the electrical activity. So, of course, we have something called um, pulseless electrical activity, right, where it looks like there's a heart rhythm, but there's actually no heartbeat. There's no pulse. And that's really important because it's just sporadic electrical activity causes it, that happens that's measured on, electric, on an ECG because that's exactly what an ECG does. So um, you can go in and, um, again, check out those different pieces. Here's just an example of the picmonic, how we talk about atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, and then um, repolarization of the ventricles. Now here's where um, you really just need to make sure that you understand this concept. The ECG paper itself is super important to know how it works. Um, and uh, you've got to really understand, to be able to calculate the heart rate, it's actually really simple. So many people get caught up on math with this, and they just get so um, confused, and they're just, I don't, you know, I'm not sure what to do, or I, I can't really get it. Um, all you have to do is, um, essentially, then we have to, you have to look at the, um, uh, the, the little tiny boxes. And this is a great example here. But what the, t the point is, is each box breaks into smaller boxes until you've got to the tiniest little box. And I think I've got this on the next slide. Yep, I did. So on the tiniest little box, here right here, we got the tiniest little box. You need to remember that one, and that's it. You need to remember 0 0.04 seconds. That's what you've got to memorize. If you memorize that, you can build off of that to all of the times and how the, the ECG measures. Because when you have the printout of ECG paper, you may have green paper or blue paper, or maybe you have, I don't know, rainbow paper. Good for you. I'd like to see some. But the point is, um, it's usually... You know, it all looks the same. It's all the same grid. And inside of here, from left to right, it measures time in seconds. And then measuring the height is essentially measuring, um, uh, we could say, maybe the intensity 
um, as a generalized term. Yes, I know that's not if you're if you're a, if you're a super nerdy, that's not ent entirely correct. But that's that's enough of a concept to understand what's going on. So 0 0.04 seconds. So what happens is, yeah, the the green paper for sure. Um, so the um, the, what happens is the 0 0.04, the tiniest little boxes, everything goes in multiples of 5 here. So you got to remember the multiples of 5. So if you remember that 5 of the smallest boxes in here going across right here, as they're evidenced right here, that equals um, 0.2 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds. So five, 0 0.04 times 5 is 0 0.2 seconds. So it's one-fifth of a second. That's correct. So then, of course, if I have 5 of these sets of the tiniest five small boxes, then that equals one second in duration across. So that's essentially 25 of the smallest boxes of 0 .0, 0 0.04 seconds. Um, and when I say that out loud and everybody hears it for the first time, they think, wow, that's, that's confusing. And I know it sounds like a lot of numbers thrown at once, but it's essentially 0 0.04 seconds of the smallest one. Now, whoever thought of this, man, they're super smart people because what happens is we need to know what, what's so important that we need to know about, um, what, what, what is so important about this 0 0.2 seconds? What's so important about that one? Why is that such an important number? Why is it such an important number? Well, that's right. The 0 0.2 seconds is where we measure heart blocks. We're measuring that period of time, and that measures heart blocks, and that's exactly right. So with that, um, moving on there, the biggest thing you've got to do next is be able to calculate the heart rate, the heart rate essentially. Now I like to use just a simple example, um, and yes, I am simplifying this. No, it's not going to work 100% of the time, but it's going to get you so close that you can always get close enough with your answer. Now when you look at a, a six second strip, how do we know it's a six second strip? Well, what's really great is, see how this is one second right here? What's the minimum amount of time we really know we need to have to interpret a proper EKG? Six seconds, right? So what's really cute is that inside of these, at the bottom of every paper, there are lines. There are lines that, that jettison down from the bottom, and they're usually little black lines. Now, there's variations in this, yes, but the point is at that these variations in, sec in, in, in these little lines are usually at three-second intervals. So they're usually three-second intervals, and then they jump over, so there's three, and then th that's three seconds, and then that's three seconds. So if I count one, two, three lines, or in between two, and skip over one line, that's a distance of six seconds. Now, what you don't want to do is waste your time and try to count all the tiny little boxes inside here. Well, how can you do that? Well, see these bolded lines? All of the ECG paper is bolded inside of here. So it's bolded inside of here, and it's bolded, and then it counts across over the lines. So that's five. That breaks it up into five, and then there's an even bolder, darker line for another multiple of five, and that's absolutely correct. Um, so you can just go from here and then go over to the other, um, the other multiple of five. So that's just where it works. But what we need to get is a six-second strip. So if you know your ECG, you know the basics, PQRST, then we can identify here, look at this, these, li these long lines. So there's a long line, here's a long line, and here's a long line. So that's one, and then there's two, so that's three seconds in between there, and then there's three seconds in between here. This particular paper actually counts every one second for us with a tiny little line. But just remember the longest signs, uh, the longest line. So that's, that's three seconds, and this is three seconds. So we've got a six second strip. Well, how do we get a heart rate speed? Literally, super simple. All you have to do is identify the, the QRS complexes and count those. Multiply it by 10. That's it. So let's look at this. So here we've got a, a P, a QRS, and a T. A P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, and P, QRS, T. So here's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, and there's five. So there are five QRS complexes in this six second strip. So all I have to do is take the, the five QRS complexes. How do I then take, know the heart rate? I multiply that by 10, and that means I've got a heart rate of about 50 here on this example. Now I say about because I can also, um, there's another way I can measure, um, I can measure the, um, the, uh, the heart rate. Uh, lots of you guys have jumped over to um, the YouTube, and yes, YouTube is delayed. Um, uh, it's delayed a little bit, so if you, you just haven't caught up, that's good, so you didn't miss anything. 
So um, we, I put, a, I did put a delay on YouTube um, the way we stream it, uh, just for tech, you know, technology's sake. I don't, there's no rule against it, but it's just, a, I don't know. It seems like fun. So if I look at this six second strip, so there I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I've got a, about a heart rate of 50 because I multiply that by 10, and that's absolutely correct. Um, so I, I can multiply that by five, and that's going to give me a heart rate of about 50. So now what if I need an exact heart rate? Well, here's where the, the, the question comes in. Almost all of the time, unless you're literally taking an ECG class at this particular time and you're getting lots of ECGs and getting just literally drilled on them, the quick method always works. It's going to get you close enough. Almost always you're going to get answers that are going to be far away. Um, you're going to see an answer um, that's 40, you know, 50, and you're going to see an answer that's 70, see an answer that's 30, and see an answer that's, you know, 26. So it's very close. Which one's the closest is most likely to be your answer. But if you need an exact answer, what you can do is count the number of boxes or the amount of time between the R to R interval. So here's a PQ to PQR. This is an R wave. So I can count the difference in time between the R's and, and, and see how much time that is total. I could count every little tiny box, or I could count the multiples of five. So there's three, so there's eight, uh, so wait, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So there's 33. I multiply 33 pi times 0 0.04, which is going to give me 1.32 seconds. And then I just take 60 and divide it by 1.32, and it's going to give me the exact heart rate of 45. All of the ECG um, monitors and all the heart monitors out there, what they do is they actually count from the R to R. They, they, they're able to identify where the R wave is, and they calculate the exact difference in real time of the R waves to give you an exact heart rate. Um, so um, one of the things, the next things is, um, let's try an example of our heart rate speed here. So here's our six second um, uh, ECG. What's the heart rate? What's the heart rate here? What do you think the heart rate is? Well, what do you got to do? Well, what you have to do is you have to count those. I mean, you could count the distance between the R to R, but that takes too long. We need to be fast. I mean, you only get a minute and 20 seconds on these questions when you're taking your boards, right? So, I mean, what's, what do you need to do? Well, you need to count the, the how many R QRS complexes are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about eight. So this heart rate is about 80. And almost all the time, literally almost every single time, you're going to be able to know exactly what's here. And um, then you're going to be able to see if that's a heart, a slow rate, or a fast rate. We're going to talk about that. So I'm not going to go into the too much into the intervals themselves um, just because I'm running behind. I don't know if it's because I'm talking so much or because the, uh, the GoToWebinar mess up's distracting me. But um, uh, we talked about the P wave itself. There's something called the PR interval. And we know the PR interval needs to be less than 0 0.2 seconds. Now, what does that match to again? Remember those five tiny blocks, the five block of five, that's 0 0.2 seconds. So that's five blocks. And what happens is that's a delay in conduction speed from the atria going down to the ventricles, from the SA node to the AV node. It's a delay. And when it delays, it's delayed because it's blocked. Oh my God, somebody was so smart who thought of this stuff, right? Because it just makes sense. So if this is delayed, that's called a heart block. Um, and there are lots of different types of heart blocks, but essentially, the number one sign of a heart rate is a uh, heart block. Sorry, is a delayed PR interval, which means it's greater than 0 0.2 seconds. Now we've got our QRS complex, which needs to be less than um, 0 0.12 seconds or 0 0.1, but I like to use 0 0.2 just because it's so um, it's three boxes again. Um, and again, if you can see more than three block boxes in there, that means it's delayed and it's going slow. That means the, um, the, the depolarization process is going slow throughout the ventricles. That happens often because of conduction problems and other injuries and, and myocardial infarctions and whatnot. We've got the, um, the QT interval. The QT interval is from the Q to the T. So it's essentially, it's the, essentially the distance from um, the time that the heart depolarizes to the time the heart repolarizes to the ventricles. I mean... Why is that so important? Well, when we think about that, what happens is we can have something called R on T phenomenon. And what happens is R on T, well, the R is on the T. And the heart is trying to depolarize and repolarize at exactly the, same, the right time. And it's because that time gets stretched out and then it causes this abnormality. And that's where we get sudden death. Um, that's where you, that's why, one of the reasons why we have um, these type of phenomenons are one of the uh, reasons why we have uh, defibrillators in every single school and every single thing now um, because of this abnormality and then of course it needs to be shocked and it, the heart goes back into rhythm. Um, that's just, you know, and then of course there are lots of drugs out there that cause QT prolongation that you need to know about.
The ST segment is the most common thing. Of course, that's from the S, a QRS to the where the T begins to deflect above the isometric line, the ST segment. And of course, that, um, that particular segment is where um, you can um, uh, measure uh, basically a cardiac injury, essentially. That's where we see that cardiac injury, ischemia, or death. That completes part one of our rapid review of ECGs. In this first part, we learned about the coronary arteries, the cardiac cycle, parts of an ECG, and ECG interpretation. Check out the playlist of those Picmonics in the summary below, then click the other link below to watch part two at picmonic.com with your free account, where we dive deeper and start applying what you've learned. See you there.